uh, all board members are in attendance this evening. Uh, is there any, uh, does anybody have any announcements before we move forward? I do. Uh, since our, our last board meeting, we've had a couple of legislative team meetings for, from the Erie County Association of School Boards. Um, one thing they're stressing that uh, leg legislative advocacy is very important this year. Uh, they do have a new website and it has a great deal of information on that legislative advocacy. It also has a new tab called uh, Bill Track where you can get information on state and, and federal uh, laws. And by the way, the, the website is free, available to anyone. You don't have to be a school board member to, to use that. Um, they are having a legislative breakfast again this year. It'll be on uh, Saturday, November 14th. But they are just going to invite the new, newly elected um, first time legislators. So for instance, we're gonna have a new uh, senator in our area. So they're gonna just invite those four across the county, the new people. They also are limiting this breakfast to 50 people because of the restrictions. Um, and they're inviting and they're, they're encouraging the legislative reps from each district to go. So I, I will plan on attending, but I will report back to everyone on, on what happens there. Um, at the end of the sessions, we've had a round table and you get to hear what's what's going on in, in the member districts. And, I, and I'm very pleased to, to say, I think we are doing very well here in Clarence. I do feel for some of the districts, uh, especially in some of the rural and Southern areas, they're, they're struggling with internet uh, capability. Also, a lot of districts are struggling with uh, the backlog of trying to get the devices. So some are waiting for four or 500 um, I, iPads or uh, laptops, so it's it's uh, it's concerning. Um, uh, also, we are all very concerned about the real possibility of the federal bailout it's stalled again, and that would be a twenty percent cut in funding. So we're we're continuing to ask people to write. I know I've written to our state and federal legislators because that's going to be uh, very bad for all. The Thank you, Dennis. Does anybody else have anything? Um, um, one thing, Mike, there was a CSEF board meeting which I attended and they just um, had a recent fundraiser and wanted to thank everybody who participated. Thank you, Don. Um, I have just two quick items uh, building on um, Mr. Priori's comments. I attended the Erie County um, School Board's Budget and Finance Committee meeting on October 8th. <clears throat> uh, I was going to mention the meeting. Uh, coming up as well as the participation cap. So just to reinforce that they are limiting the participants to 50. So if there isn't any interest in some of the upcoming sessions uh, suggestion, we would register early. Um, and again, they're planning to do three between now and the end of the year, uh, all virtual. And they're going to reassess next year as we get closer. Uh, they're also going to charter a committee to look at the dues formulas. So Hopefully uh, our dues will go down next year. <clears throat> uh, secondly, I attended the uh, SEPSA uh, meeting on October 13th. Uh, just for those um, who aren't aware, SEPSA conducts only two meetings every year. I've included at each of the board members' desks a application for membership, which uh, is very modest, but it helps uh, them satisfy their charter as a PTA. <clears throat> but it also provides a little bit of revenue to them. Uh, what they, again, are, their purpose is to really uh, conduct uh, information sessions for parents. Currently, they're planning three this year, uh, one in November uh, uh, with the topic around Harkness. In January, uh, technology support. They're hoping to have a possible University of Kansas professor uh, attend and present to the group. And then in March, uh, social emotional practices, uh, more to come. Uh, but I left that information uh, at each board member's uh, seat. Does anybody have anything else? All right. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the agenda for this evening? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That carries. Uh, we have in our packet. Um, our minutes from our regular meeting and executive session on September 21st. Can I get a motion to approve those minutes? Thank you. Do I have a second? second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It carries. Um, <clears throat> regarding correspondence, uh, we received a number of uh, communications since the last uh, board meeting on September 21st. 
Uh, noted on the agenda are nine emails concerning girls' soccer. Uh, since the publication of this agenda, we also did receive an email regarding school tax payments as well. With that, we're at our first public comment session. Seeing no one is uh, present currently, I think we can uh, move on. Uh, any unfinished business before we move into the superintendent's report? Dr. Hicks, the floor is yours. Thanks, gonna go real quickly. Um, as far as an update from the last time that we presented to the board, we've had a grand total of four positive tests. On September 13th, we had a positive test at the middle school, two at Clarence Center Elementary uh, on October 8th, and one at the high school on October 11th. So 4,100 kids, a month and a half, four positives, um, we think that's a good testament to kids doing the right thing and staff and also all of the mitigation factors that we've put in. So uh, as far as the Erie County Department of Health guidelines, any individual who tests positive must be quarantined for 10 days. That's 10 days from the onset of their symptoms. So it may not be 10 days from the time they get the result. And that sometimes confuses, uh, confuses people. The Department of Health determines who's a close contact and the start date for the quarantine period. Sometimes there could be a student who was in the same class as a student who tested positive and that student gets a shorter or the quarantine period actually began before the positive test came through and therefore it looks like a shorter period of quarantine even though it has not been that way. So. Anyone who's a close contact has to quarantine for 14 days, but the start date for that sometimes is differentiated depending upon the Department of Health. Um, Governor Cuomo introduced this a week ago, a little bit over a week ago, the cluster initiative. So if you have a, an area, a geographic area, which could be streets, it could be a portion of a zip code, it could be something that you draw a diameter around that has four or five neighborhoods in it. So if you are a red zone, which according to the initial criteria was greater than 3% positivity rate on a seven day rolling average, okay? If you're in a red zone and you're a school, you must close in-person instruction for at least two weeks. If you're in an orange zone, which is one quarter of a mile outside the diameter of the red zone, you must, and you're a school, you must close in-person instruction for two weeks. A quarter mile outside of the orange zone is the yellow zone. And schools would then be required to test 20% of in-person kids, teachers, and staff at least once per week for as long as the school remains in that designated zone. Right now, Rockland County has a designated zone, Orange County has a designated zone, a portion of Brooklyn has a designated zone, and Broome County, which is kind of mid-state lower, uh, has, uh, has schools in a yellow zone as well. Uh, I don't know how they're doing the testing, uh, because for us, uh, with 4,100 kids, 20% would be 800 and some odd kids and teachers that we would have to somehow test on a weekly basis, and we would need their permission to do so uh, because you can't just force someone to be tested. So some of these areas have figured that out and we'll use that as guidance if we ever get into this situation. James? Is that 20% of the kids in school and yeah. staff? So it's... Yeah, it'd be a little less. So yes, it's 20% of in-person. You don't have to test those kids who are 100% hybrid, or I'm sorry, 100% remote. So the Department of Health does provide the rapid testing kits to the local health department, hospitals, and other healthcare providers and testing agencies and labs, I'm assuming. And we would have to partner with someone to help with this testing protocol. Whether or not the tests took place in school or at laboratories or at other places, we'd somehow have to figure that out if we ever got into the yellow zone. So the materials for the testing is free, however, the administration of the testing may not be free and the school district may have to pick the tab up for that. So some of this is very unknown. Luckily, Western New York is at about 1.3 to 1.6%. Uh, there's no place that's in a, 
there, there are no designated geographic areas that are in a red or orange zone. So we're in good shape for now, but this is the most recent stuff from the governor. And again, the dashboard continues to change. We just had additional questions added to the dashboard today. So we must on a daily basis by 4 p.m. report all positive cases of students and staff on site and off site by school and by district. Um, the number of students and staff on site, the number of students and staff off site and the percentage of kids who test positive. In addition to us filling out the dashboard on a daily basis, the labs who actually do the test and have an address on the student and that student falls within Clarence, they also provide the number of tests of individuals who live within school district boundaries. Now there may be a discrepancy between what the school posts and what the labs post because not every person who is a school-aged kid attends Clarence schools that live in Clarence. So they could be attending a private school, they could be attending a charter school, they could be home taught. So that's the quick update and um, we're ready to answer any questions from the board if you have any on where things stand. Okay, thanks very much. That concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you, Dr. Hicks. Moving forward, uh, finances, Mr. Mancuso. Thank you. Uh, we have July and August financial reports plus the schedule of bills. Um, I did want to mention that we are scheduled to receive or have received in part uh, just over a million dollars in CARES Act funds. And these funds are uh, completely additional revenues with no additional expenditures tied to them. So they will cover shortfalls up to that million dollars in essence. Um, I also noted that the first quarter of sales tax came in approximately $100,000 less than we had hoped. So that could be, um, and again, the first quarter is, is not a perfect gauge of how it will go through the year, but it could be a, a $400,000 shortfall there. But the million plus for the CARES money at that point, at this point, takes care of it. Um, we did receive 20% less on a BOCES aid accrual payment, um, which totaled about $90,000. At this point in time, the 20% is a hold back and it's not a cut yet. Is there any additional questions? I just have a, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I have a question. Do you know like approximately like how much money we've spent on like all the extra like all like these everything we've had to do like overtime, cleaning costs. Do you know what the approximate figure on that is? I don't have a, a, an exact number on the um, additional um, cost for cleaning, let's say. The, uh, the polycarbonate that was purchased was um, purchased out of last year's pre-purchase funds and it totaled just over $900,000. Uh, we also spent, um, if, if uh, again, it was, we were fortunate to have a, a large excess, especially in the health coverage account, by June 30th, so we were also able to pre-purchase uh, in the neighborhood of $60,000 for PPE stuff, masks and things. With, with regards to the, uh, first off, the CARES Act funding, it's fantastic that we, we have that, that revenue coming in. <clears throat> the Erie County uh, portion, as, as I understand it, it was really, um, dispersed to the districts based on enrollment so it wasn't necessarily tied to any particular spend that we initiated correct uh, we we have to log and and keep for audit purposes um, a, a tally of what that money was used for okay. however the money was retroactive till March so um, the polycarbonate dividers qualify so, so then uh, with regards to the federal funds, that was something we had to apply for. Is that, um, so if, if we did not spend money on certain items, we would not have been eligible for this. Was the polycarbonate in that money as well or what was in that money? No, um, what, uh, there's basically two sources um, of expenditures that we will 
charge to those care funds, the second group of care funds. Um, and both of them are eligible and, and that's why the, the application was approved. One of them are uh, uh, certain types of teachers. Some of our um, special area teachers are able to be charged there. Um, certainly if we didn't run special classes, then we would have had to look for some other method to charge for those funds. The other half of those funds were for the uh, additional uh, Chromebooks and iPads that we purchased. How many additional iPads and Chromebooks did we purchase? We've got, we've got about 1,600 total devices from uh, not a perfect memory, but my best memory from when we started looking towards the complete one-on-one -on -one, uh, divvying out of devices. But then was part of the funding taken from the, tech, the technology um, funds that were provided? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and then I, I guess I want to thank you for including some additional reports this month on the cash flow in that, um, given the uncertainty I had, that certainly the million dollars helps uh, in CARES funding. Just obviously two big revenue streams are the, the collection of the local taxes, well three, uh, sales tax, which you touched on probably being a risk a little bit this year. Um, and then the, the state aid, which comes more in, uh, after the first of the year. Correct. So um, any, any uh, issues with collection of, of property taxes, we still get our full share, is that correct? Correct. Um, you know, we, we have had um, a few people contact the office and a few people contact the various town collectors that are collecting for us, talking about, you know, because school isn't in full session, should they get a rebate on their taxes or pay less taxes? Um, anyone who's got to us, we've explained the process that New York State uses to fund schools and it happens to be property taxes and that there's no way to do a refund. Um, every given year out of our, uh, this year our tax levy is just over $50 million. Any given year approximately 1 million is uh, people who are either paying at an elongated schedule or are default on their taxes. When that happens, uh, just after the first of the year, January, February time, Erie County makes us whole, and they pay us to the penny all of those funds. And then it's Erie County who has to go against the homeowner to uh, collect those funds or, or possibly um, attach their house. Thank you. Any other questions of Mr. Mancuso? Seeing none, can I get a motion to approve the finance uh, reports F1 and F2. Do I have a second? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Michelle, instructional. Uh, this evening we have a start change for the middle school orchestra teacher appointments this month. We have one regular substitute position at CMS. We have an extracurricular, one coaching position, two club positions. Uh, letter C has mentor appointments for teachers and D has a department chairperson. P3 is a list of the salary adjustments for additional coursework that's done twice each year. Uh, P4 is the fall curriculum projects from Mrs. Overholt. P6 has additions and deletions to our substitute list. And P7 is a resolution for the employment agreement with the superintendent. Are there any questions on instructional? My only comment would be, of course, Mary Allmiller is listed twice, and she should only be listed once on P3. Thank you, Don. Mm -hmm. I guess I just have a general question. I see a number of substitutes being added to the list, which is good. Um, so far, have we had any challenges knowing that we haven't entered the sixth season yet? If it, you will? it still will fill at different rates depending upon the day and what building has an opening. Uh, we have an open position on the Winnie Rick system. So monthly, I bring in new candidates every month before the board meeting. And our current number of substitutes right now is 152. Okay. Thank you. 
there's no other questions, could I get a motion to approve the instructional items P1 to P7? I'll make a motion. Second. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, all right. That carries. Uh, Non-instructional? P8 amends previously approved actions for two employees. One was a building assignment and one is a retirement date change. Uh, resignations this month, we have two retirements. Diana Crayer, who was an aide for an entire career at Harris Hill, served the district for 20 years. And Randy Stanek, a custodian in multiple buildings in the district, served the district for 32 years. So thank you to both of them for their length of service and everything they've done for our students. Uh, the other resignation is one other support staff member. P10 has temporary and regular changes to increase in hours for aides for student needs or supervisory because of COVID. Uh, P11 has two requests for unpaid leaves of absence. P12 appointments this month, we have temporary and probationary cleaning positions going forward. Three teacher aides, two lifeguards, and one district-wide nurse that floats from building to building. P13 has an inf just as an information item is a building transfer of one of our aides. And P14 is our non-instructional substitute list with the additions and deletions. Any questions on non-instructional? Are any of those cleaner positions, are they new positions? Or just people filling? In, in some cases, we, we did add a few new ones, okay. but we've also had resignations along the way. So we we're, it's a combination of filling new positions all of the temporary positions are all new positions. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Rick, do we go back and talk with the existing cleaners about adding to their schedule? Because I know that we had gotten an outside cleaning company at one point. Where does that stand? Are we still utilizing them? Sure. Uh, yes, you know, we, uh, we're putting to work every single cleaner or custodian that wants to work overtime. Uh, they know their buildings the best. And as uh, Mr. Michelle mentioned, we are hiring a couple more, but mainly temporary ones for other staff members that do want to clean. Uh, what we found is that trying to do a deep cleaning at every building twice a week, which would be midweek on Wednesday, and then whether it's Friday or Saturday or Sunday, but you know over the weekend, is all we can do with our staff, even the enhanced staff. So what we did make a commitment to and what we want to do is we want to clean the polycarbonate at least once a week. And that is the only um, purpose that we're using the cleaning company for now. Thank you. How does the polycarbonate seem to be holding up after cleaning repeatedly? So far it actually is yeah. holding up very well. Um, you know, the, if, if, um, if germs could be seen, um, we would say that there are some that actually, some polycarbonate that doesn't look like they need to be cleaned, but we do want to clean them each um, week because of that. And then Rick, who, who is in charge of the cleaning company and making sure who like is responsible for that? Is that Brian Lovell? Uh, um, yes, I mean, we have supervisor below Brian who is also taking the lead on it, Jeff Nowicki, and then Brian Logel and myself. And we've all tried to stay on top of it. Um, I let them in ledge you once. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, can I get a motion to approve the non-instructional items P8 to P14? Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Uh, Dr. Hicks, special needs and student activities? Uh, on your agenda, 31 committee on special education meetings for school age kids and 15 for preschool. Mostly changes to their IEPs this month. Any questions? Can I get a motion to approve S1 and S2? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We have no board development items this evening. Um, we're at our second public comment session of the evening. There are, there are no emails asking questions at this time. Thank you, Mr. Michelle. All right. Um, I guess with that, um, in the committee as a whole, uh, informational items in our packet, we have a schedule of upcoming meetings. <clears throat> the next board meeting will be on November 16th 
Uh, that will take place again in this room uh, at 7 p.m., preceded by a meeting with the Sheridan Hill uh, principal, um, just to get an update on Sheridan Hill. Uh, and then we also have uh, five board members and Dr. Hicks participating in the NISPA convention, which will be virtual this year on October 27th to the 29th. Before I entertain a motion to adjourn, does anybody else have anything for this evening? I just have one question. Um, with cold and flu season coming up um, and a lot of common cold and the symptoms mimic, you know, COVID. So, you know, as a parent that has to fill out the health screening questionnaire, like I, I, how are we gonna differentiate or if we thought about that, if, you know, my, my child were to have just a cold or the she spikes a fever, you know, we just going to mark that keep them home like quarantine and all that right i quarantine no but if there's if they're symptomatic in any way yeah. even if it's mimicking especially if it mimics covid symptoms then what we're requesting is that parents keep kids home okay the live stream may not have worked we yeah. just got an email to Rob from somebody saying they're still waiting to get on. So but does, does on. Tim know what happened? He doesn't know what happened, but he said it did not work. Okay. It, so we have to it, do it all again? It appears <laughs> that it didn't work. I recorded it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. Um, well, it is what it is. Uh, I guess at this juncture, if no one else has any other questions, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss upcoming negotiations with the CTA. Motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Good night, everyone.